Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Chad and welcome to a special YouTube edition of Firechild Entertainment's After Effects Tutorials. And I say YouTube edition because YouTube limits me to 10 minutes, which means I'm going to have to fly through this one pretty quick, but I should be able to go enough in detail to uh, show you what I'm going to be doing. So I've got a super effect to show you today. Some kids would even call it, I don't know, super duper. And I like to call those guys fanboys and point and laugh hysterically. But anyway, let's take a look at what we'll be creating. Ah, see, super makes sense now, doesn't it? Um, we're going to be making a title effect that would make even the son of Jarrell proud. Now, if you're not getting that reference and it's way over your head, I suggest hitting stop right now. Uh, get yourself a Netflix account or head over to Blockbuster and go ahead and buy yourself a clue because you're not ready for this one. Anyway, time is of the essence, so let's go ahead and stop that and we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, ready? I'm going to create a new composition, NTSC DV widescreen settings, 10 second duration, and click OK. Then I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to type my text. I'm going to say Fire Child. That, like that. Bring my title action safe, zoom out a little bit, and like I said, zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to center it up. And then I'm going to take my pan behind tool, which is this tool right here, grab my center point, and center it in front of my word, like that. Now, the next thing you want to do is you don't want the fill on these words. All you want is just the outline. So, the quick fix to that, once you pick your color, is to go over here and click this double headed arrow which swaps your fill and stroke. So now all we have is the stroke. Now right now I've got mine set at 1.5 pixels for the width. Uh, I'm going to change that a little bit later but I'm going to leave it this way uh, to help me animate here for a second. But first of all let's go ahead and change the color. And what we want is a nice dark dark color like that. All right, that's good. Now what we want to do is make it a 3D layer by clicking right here. And then we'll hit P on our keyboard, hold down Shift, and hit R. It brings up Position and Rotation. And at the beginning of our composition, we'll hit the stopwatch for Position and Z Rotation. Then what we can do is we can start manipulating this. Uh, we'll drop it back. I'm actually going to bring up my stroke to about 5 for now, just so I can see it. I'll change that in a minute. We'll drop this back to about 1,500 on the Z. Uh, maybe 2500 yeah like that I'm gonna bring it up I'm gonna zoom out so I can see um, bring it over and I'll probably bring it up a little bit more and then I'll set my Z rotation to about 50 degrees just like that and I'll maybe move it on the way a little bit more over here just kinda get it in this top right corner a little bit alright and then we'll go ahead to two seconds 2.0 in our timeline and what we want to do now is set our Z rotation back to zero that brings it parallel again and we'll drop the Y down and basically we just want to center it back up at the two second mark so bring it to about there uh, the part isn't it's it's all personal preference so however you want to do your animation for your text uh, then we'll bring our Z position back to zero and that looks pretty good then we'll go to four seconds and we will, if you hold down shift while you're dragging, it'll make it go quite a bit faster. Uh, I want it to just where I can see it, and then I will drop the Y down. Oh, maybe right there. And then bring off about 15, negative 1500. And if we do a RAM preview, you see the text flying out. And then off to the side, just like that. Cool. Now that's the basic animation we're going to go for. Nothing too fancy or too complicated. So uh, we'll go to our two second mark, which is the middle point. And we're going to add an effect. Oh, first I want to drop the stroke back down to 0.5. And you can't see it right now, but you will in a second. Uh, all right, let's add our effect. Effect, time, echo. And you can't really see anything. Um, let me go ahead and duplicate this layer. And I'll bring the duplicate to the bottom. And I'll delete the echo effect. And I'll bring this up to about 1.5. It's just to help us see it as we work with it. Okay, back on our top layer. For our echo effect, I'm not going to go too in detail of the workings of the echo effect. 
because like I said, I'm on a very tight time limit thanks to YouTube's 10 minute rule. So I'm just gonna kind of fly through this. Um, first thing you wanna do is we wanna change our starting intensity back to down to 0.94. Uh, change our decay barely just a little bit 0.99 we'll change our echo operator from add to blend so to recap starting intensity 0.94 decay 0.99 and our echo operator to blend then we want to go to echo time and change it from negative 0 0.0333 to 0 0.005 and still nothing happens here it got a little bit brighter but that's about it but that's because we need to animate our number of echoes. So if we click the stopwatch for number of echoes and then hit U on our keyboard, it brings that keyframe up in our timeline here. And we'll go back about a half a second to about one and a half seconds. One and a half, like that. And we'll drag that keyframe over to there. And then we'll drop the number of echoes from one down to zero, so there's no echoes. Uh, we'll go forward one second to two and a half seconds, and we'll bring the number of echoes. Be prepared, folks. This is going to take a while to 125. Now it's going to render, and it's going to take a while for you to see the effect, but I promise you it is worth it. And like I said, I'm not promising you the best to do this. There's easier way. I'm just showing you the best way I know how, and it does produce some pretty cool results. So we'll wait on this thing to render out, show us what it's done, and there we have it. Now, one problem you see right off the bat is you can see the lines, and it's not not quite there. So what we're going to do is add another effect, Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Radial Fast Blur. And we'll go ahead and drop the amount of the blur down to about 7. We just need a slight blur, just to kind of blend in these edges a little bit. And we'll wait for it to render. Da -da -da. Yeah, this is fun. I'm going to skip a time a little. All right, so skipping ahead, we see that it starts to blur out a little bit, which is good. Um, yeah, next thing we need to do is we need to turn on our motion blur for our layer and for the composition itself. And then we'll do a test render. Now, be prepared. Like I said, this test render, you know, the slower your system, the longer it's going to take. It takes about five minutes for the test render. But uh, the end result is is worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit RAM Preview and let it do its thing. And I'm going to go ahead and see the effect I'm talking about. Okay, I'm still doing the RAM Preview, but I've already noticed a couple of problems. First of all, it's invisible for a while there. And then when it finally does appear, it's already stretching. So to fix that, we'll go back in here, hit U, and we'll take our two uh, number of echo keyframes and we'll drag those over to about two seconds and then we'll drag the second one over just a little bit more just to kind of space it out a little bit and another thing we can do is go to our first number of echoes keyframe this one right here and change it to one that should give you a little bit more we can see it a little bit better and we can also lighten the color of that duplicate layer that we made maybe kind of a real light light color let me make it a little bit lighter than that and that just makes it easier to see as it flies out because now you can really see it. And now we'll go ahead and do a RAM preview. And it's going okay, but it's going to take a while. Once we start seeing this, it's really going to take a while. Go ahead and skip forward. All right, so jumping ahead in time here, that took about four or five minutes to render. Let's go ahead and see what our end result is like. Pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's not perfect, it's not exactly like the uh, movie effect, but uh, not bad for 10 seconds either. Hope you enjoyed it.